Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from the Laws of Attraction in Action, guys, and that's the laws, plural, of attraction in action, and not the law of attraction. Well, guys, welcome to another episode of You and You and the Laws of Attraction. And once again, guys, be very clear, it's the laws, plural, of attraction and not the law of attraction. Well, once again, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn and today is, it's an off day, usually I do this on a Wednesday, but today is Friday the 15th of November 2019 and the hour is actually 1 p.m. So I'm going to be with you for mm, the next, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes and today what I want to share with you, what, what I want to talk about is the fact that miracles happen. And that's the that that's the title of the show today. Miracles happen. It's really important to understand that in our lives, what happens to us is based upon the choices that we make. Now, for all of those who don't know me, if you're just getting to know me, welcome. Hi, hello. And if you do know me, well, you know where I'm going with this. Our lives are predicated upon the choices that we make. Our lives are built one choice at a time. Its choices are the building blocks of our lives. Everything that happens to us in life is predicated upon the choices that we make. And this is whether the choice has been made under duress. This is whether it's been made of your free will. This is whether you feel duty bound to make the choice. Our choices... Our choices create the lives that we are living. And just so you know, nothing, absolutely nothing happens to us without us first choosing it. Now, choice can be a conscious thing and it can also be a a subconscious thing or an unconscious thing, if you will. But it's still a choice. You don't get a hall pass because you've done something subconsciously. No, you need to be in control of you and your mind. Please understand, I'm not saying that you need to be robotic in how you you approach and how you live your life. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that you get to control your mind. One of the memes that I had put out, uh, I believe this week, was um, who's controlling your mind? And that's a powerful thing. Who is controlling your mind? Actually, that's the show all by itself. Who's controlling your mind? And if not you, then who? So once again, your life is built upon the choices that you make. So choose wisely. Use the power of your conscious choice to subconsciously create that which it is that you say that you want in life. And use the power of your mind to do that, to create the life that you say that you want to live. It's really important to understand that as you as you make a choice, as you as you go through life and you you make choices, the choices that actually manifest are the choices that really have your attention and have your attention in the way of passion, how how much energy is generated towards it, how much passion you feel about it. And passion can come in the form of things like anger, things like joy, that sort of thing. Mind you, emotions should not dictate your choices. Emotions tell you what you feel about a choice. Okay, guys? It tells you the the intensity of the energy that's been put forth towards the choice. So anyway, that being said, guys, uh, today we're going to be talking about the fact that miracles happen. And guys, miracles do happen. And just as a point of reference, a miracle really is an effect or something that happens or an extraordinary event that happens in a physical form, that happens in a tangible form. It's not intangible. But it happens in a physical form. And it happens in a way that surpasses all known human or natural powers that you could that you can think of. And therefore, it can be ascribed to being something supernatural that has caused it. 
And this is um, taking this, well, in part and paraphrasing from dictionary.com. It also says a miracle such as an, uh, an effect or an event manifesting or considered to be as the work of God. It's a wonder. It's a marvel. It's a wonder. Uh, it's a wonderful or surpassing example of something of quality. Miracles happen in our lives every day and miracles happen in our lives every day because we are who we are and we're doing what we are doing. Miracles happen because we are hmm, extraordinary people. We are extraordinary people and because we are living the lives that we are living, sometimes it appears that um, things happen to us that are contrary to what should happen or what we believe should happen. Take, for instance, if you have somebody who's ill and um, the general opinion of consensus based on other people's experiences, which then give a criteria for people to follow, this, 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 says that this person who has this illness really shouldn't make it. And against all seemingly odds, they make it. And people say that this is a miracle because something supernatural has happened. I believe in miracles. I am a metaphysician which means basically that I know for me at any rate that there is something that is greater than the physical or something that is beyond the physical. And as a metaphysician, this is how I live my life, knowing that there is an energetic, uh, this energy out there that can be utilized should we choose to use the power of our conscious mind, we can use this energy to create that which we say that we want in life. And when we do this um, subconsciously, and we really do this subconsciously a lot of times, guys, we say a miracle has happened and it's all to the highest for me. It's all to the highest when miracles happen. So that being said, if you're just joining me once again, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn and you are listening to an episode of You and the Laws of Attraction and that's the laws plural. Miracles happen, guys. When we know what we want, when we know what we are wanting in life and when we actually choose, and here we go with choice again, when we choose to follow that pathway without reservation, without reservation, even, even when the pathway before us appears to be unclear, like we can't see where we're going, but we're on this pathway, it's diehard, we're doing it. Miracles happen. When we choose to follow our chosen pathway, and what I mean by that is simply this, my chosen pathway in life, my purpose, my chosen pathway I'm actually equating that with pur purpose. When we choose to follow our chosen pathway, and I'm going to use mine, mine's choice, and choose to, 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 to follow this with commitment, despite, you know, all the trepidation that we have. And when I, when I say about, when I talk about trepidation, I'm talking about all the hurdles that we have to go through. In Look, guys, even though there are, Millions of people out there who are consciously aware of the purpose, their purpose for being, and they're following it. It doesn't mean that, like for me, myself personally, I'm not subject to the ups and downs of life. It doesn't mean that I'm not affected by things that happen in my life. You know, the death of a loved one, the birth of, you know, a, a, a great a great grand niece or nephew. It doesn't mean that I'm not affected by that. You know, celebrating an anniversary or, or a birthday. It doesn't mean that I'm not affected by that. I am. I'm living my life. But what it does mean 
is that despite all the trepidations that we go through, despite the ups and downs, the joys, I stay on course. In spite and despite the constant, and I mean this is constant for most people, that internal dialogue that is doing its best to tell us differently by whispering to us, go go another way, but we choose not to. We choose in the face of all of this to continue on our chosen pathway, even though it appears to be unclear. We commit to the process. And guys, we have internal dialogues and we have these internal dialogues, plural. And, you know, to say that the dialogue is wrong, that's not true. You see, in the same way you have a conscious mind, you have an unconscious mind. Your conscious mind actually responds to your, your five senses. Your unconscious mind, your subconscious mind really responds to the energetic side of you or that supernatural side of you or that spiritual side of you, whatever term works for you. That's the subconscious side of you. And when the two come together, that can make magic or that can make miracles happen. You see, I was going to say about the, the, the dialogues that we have. Our dialogues are literally based on our internal dialogues and external dialogues for that matter are based on our thought process and what we feel and, and what we think about things. Um, it's based on our five senses. So it's based on our experiences. And this is where our external dialogue comes from that actually affects the internal dialogue and the internal dialogue will ex- will affect the external dialogue guys as you speak to yourself you can actually change your life and change your world by how you speak to yourself now your internal dialogue is something, and I've spoken about this at length, many, many shows, many, many shows, when I was doing um, It's My Life, My Choice, have spoken at length about this. But when you're, when you're having an internal dialogue with yourself, you, you are creating an external reality. And once again, depending on how much energy you actually place on the thought processes that you have, the feelings that you have, and then the belief that you have, and then the faith that it conjures up and everything that needs to be in place for something to manifest, it it will manifest. So your internal dialogue and your external dialogue, they need to be of one accord. They need to be of one accord. That being said, if your true feeling your true belief is that this is your chosen pathway, irrespective of the the dialogue. It's the feeling. It's the feeling that will count. It's the feeling that takes you through. So guys, when we, and I, I have been saying for the last two years, and I know you guys have been hearing me say this. I've been saying this for the last two years. I actually need to do a webinar on imagination. Now I've done visualization and for me imagination is one of the last frontiers that I have to work on in order to bring all the information to you that needs to be brought to you in regard to utilizing the laws of attraction so that you can have what you want. But that being said When we use our imagination, okay, guys, when we use our imagination, um, wonderful things can happen. And using our imagination is an extremely important part of the manifestation process. Okay, guys, so look, let, let, let me just, let me just talk about imagination for a hot second, our imagination, or let's talk about to, to image, to, to imagine something. Okay. 
to imagine really deals with you having mental pictures or mental images, but mental pictures And it's a good mental picture. It's a good representation. But it's not something that is actually present. It's not something that is actually in physical form. It's not something that is tangible. You cannot in physical, the physical reality, you can't touch it. However, you can use your senses to imagine what it would feel like. So to imagine, imagine a, let me say a feather. If you don't have a feather in your hand, you can imagine what the feather feels like. You can imagine what it feels like, but you don't have it in your hand. Even with food, you can imagine what something tastes like. Uh, With sound, you can imagine what this song sounds like. You can imagine what, you know, what what you want your, your ideal significant other to look like. You can use your imagination. You can create a form in a mental image of something that is not physically present. And this is your imagination. Imagination is huge, guys. When I when I said to you, it's one of the frontiers, final frontiers, it's huge. It is huge. And I think that within the actual teachings of the laws of attraction, it is truly something that is underplayed. It is truly something that is underplayed. That and visualization, and your visualization needs to be a moving visualization. Don't just see it, be inside of it. Be in, be at the core, be at the heart of it. You know, if you're visualizing something, be on the inside looking out, not the outside looking in. No, that's not where you want to be. But anyway, guys, as I was saying, when we use our imagination to experience our heart's desire and the end goal, and we really use that and we're, and, and, and we're feeling it and we believe it, We believe, despite and in spite, despite the trepidations, and as I said before, you know, that constant constant internal and external dialogue doing its best to tell you, get off that pathway because it's unclear or it appears unclear. You see, miracles will happen because the universal creator, which is within us, we are the temple of the living God. We don't live outside the temple. The God, the God within us lives within us, resides within us. And the universal creator within us will actually utilize our energy to go to the point of creation by moving heaven and everything on earth and around earth so that you, me, us, we can have our heart's desire. And understand me, guys, your heart's desire is the thing that you are feeling to the core of your being. It's the thing that you feel to your soul. This is why I say, you know, the universal creator will move people, places and things. I'm always saying that so that you can have what you want. This is why. This is why, guys, and I am going to use the bell here. And I know that was loud. This is why, guys, it's really important. And I mean vitally important that you let no man or no woman, no child, nobody choose your pathway in this life. You see, your pathway was chosen for you before you came into being. Your pathway was chosen for you before you you came into being. And when I say your pathway was chosen for you, no, that was a joint, that was a joint um, decision as to what it is that you are going to do here to magnify 
and glorify and magnify and glorify the energy of everything that's living because you're a part of that. That's like water. No matter where that water is, it is a part of any ocean out there. That's where it comes from. It's a part of the ocean. And as I said in, I think, um, I've, I've got either I said it in one of my tutorials, water, it doesn't matter what four, what four states it comes up with, comes up in, it's still water. Whether it's like plasma, a vapor or gas, um, a solid or a liquid or a semi-solid, it's still water. The characteristic how it came into being, it was still water. So once again, guys, let no man or no woman or no child choose your pathway. Your pathway was chosen before you came into being and you were a part of that, that, that process. So let no man or woman dictate what the desire of your heart must be. Don't look guys, Enough, enough. Stop letting people tell you who you are when they don't even know you. Stop letting people, and I'm talking about media, I'm talking about people up close and personal to you. Enough, stop it. Your life is is moving and passing and running apart. Look, as they say, none of us is doing the Benjamin Buttons. None of us is getting younger here. So stop letting people control you. Excuse me, hiccups. Stop letting people control you. Stop people stop letting people control you. When Okay. All right. I, I've got a question for you. All right, guys. Actually, I've got the hiccups. Excuse me, guys. I've got the hiccups. All right. Um, I have a question for you. And you've heard this question before. You've heard this question before. But before I ask this question, I'm going to say to you that many people, you know, they'll say that they don't know what their purpose is in life and many people will say that they they don't know what their purpose is in life and ah you know I, I i can't subscribe to that i can't subscribe to that this is your life and of course and i will own i'll be the first to own whatever you do it's your choice but this is your life it truly is your life. So I'm going to ask you this question, okay? And you can stop you can stop this recording and you know, think about it for a while. Think about it. Think about your answer. Think about you. So I'm going to ask this question, what are you wanting for you? And I really mean that. What are you wanting for you? Just you. I'm not talking about your children. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm not talking about the religious organization or spiritual organization you belong to. I'm not talking about a sense of duty. I'm not talking about social dictates. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm asking you, what are you wanting for you? Just you. What are you wanting? You'd be surprised because, or you may be surprised, because within your answer, you'll actually find your purpose. You will find when you truly answer this and you start delving into this in truth, honesty, integrity, um, with discipline and commitment, you will find your reason for being. And your reason 
you, okay, you'll delve into this and you will find your reason for being. Actually, you'll find, you'll find the reason for you being a human being. And that's the reason why you are here. And you see, guys, only you can answer that question and only you can answer that question and only you can know this because it is your experience. And most people who know why they are here categorically and nobody can tell me I'm not here to tell people in the way I want to tell people about the power that they have when they consciously choose what they want in life and all that is involved in that nobody can tell me I'm not here to do that and you can have your own experience and know what it is that you are here to do and once again we have done several shows on that and that's when I was doing a show with my sister called it's my life my choice okay You might be here for expression. You might be here for love. You might be here for joy. You might actually be here to demonstrate hate. You see, guys, there's a law of polarity, two opposite poles. You cannot have day without night. It's impossible. There's no contrast. You need a contrast. You cannot have wet without dry. You need a contrast. There has to be a, 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 some sort of meter, some sort of reading, some sort of, you, you have to be able to quantify and you cannot quantify if you don't have a contrast. So for you, you know why you're here. And as I said, I've done several shows about this already and and it's all about how you talk to yourself. My thing, even as a child, is I just want to be able to choose. I just want to be able to choose. Other people, their whole mantra in life, that in thing, well, I I, I just want to express myself. And expression might be the choice. I just want to be heard vocalizing or voicing what you want could be your thing find your voice find your voice people need to find their voice and so for you again when you ask yourself this question what is it that you are wanting when you delve deep into it when you go it's like journey to the center of the earth when you go deep into this you will find an answer and that answer will be your purpose. And from there, you can surround your purpose with whatever you want to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. I could have I could have said, right, I wanted to be on stage, theatre, sing, what have you, and bring that message that way. I mean, it, you, you can use whatever creative method you want. But within you, within you, is the answer to your purpose. And this show really isn't about that, but it is about that. So what I would say to you again is, what are you wanting for you? Just for you. And guys, answer what? Do you want wealth? Do you want money? Do you want abundance? Do you want prosperity? Do you want radiant health? You know, Are you looking for the fountain of youth? Are you looking for joy, happiness, fulfillment, peace? You know, more connectivity with God or your your, your higher God mind or whomever your chosen deity is. What is it that you are wanting for you? You see, you could have said, I want more money for me. And my thing is, that's absolutely wonderful. What is it that you are wanting money to do for you well I want money to bring security in my life well what I would say to you is your purpose for being in life may be that to bring the understanding of what security is to people and everything that it everything that in it entails and again using all sorts of creativity to get there 
You see, guys, in answering this question, it doesn't matter how big or how outlandish or ostentatious your wanting is. This is your wanting. It can be as big as the universe as you know it to be and don't know it to be. It can be that big. It's about you. But what does matter is if your wanting is too small and it, it's being dictated by what other people think. So you say you will just take this small thing or it's just enough because you feel based on external factors that you're not worth more. And hopefully that made sense. That when you answer the question of what you are wanting, so your miracle can come into being, you decide to go small just so it will happen, or you decide to go small, or you decide on just enough because you don't feel that you're worth more. See, guys, it, look. <sighs> look, guys, it, it's like this. It matters, it matters, it matters what you think, it matters a great deal, okay? And if you feel that you are not worthy of more, you should be, you should, look, if you feel that you're not worthy of more or you just think you're worthy of just enough or you feel that you're, you're worthy of um, having some money in the bank but just enough. No, you're worthy of more, a great deal more. And it does matter. You know, I, I could actually really placate and, you know, do the whole soothing word thing and say, it's okay if you don't know what you want. Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm not doing that and I won't. I'm not doing that and I won't. Because the truth is, irrespective of God knowing the universal creator whom this is who your energy is from. This is who you are made from. Knows your worth. You must know it too. So in order for you to receive what is your worth, even with God knowing who you are, you must know it and believe it for yourself. Once again, the only things that manifest for you, the only things that manifest for you are the things that you have chosen to believe in and you've chosen to believe in with intent, focus, passion and feeling and belief. You see, the upswing to this is that everything that you manifest, okay guys, and this is even if you're manifesting things that you don't actually want to happen in your life, which is where many of us are. Um, the upswing to all of this is that whatever you are manifesting is truly manifesting in such a way that it gives you opportunities. And I mean many opportunities to choose from so that you can consciously consciously find your purpose and step on your chosen unique pathway and you're on your pathway to enlightenment and your purpose this is why things happen to us in the way that they do and in that being said taking that things happen for us now it, it's unfortunate guys it's it's really unfortunate and, and, and let me just back up just so everybody's clear on that the upswing to things manifesting in your life <coughs> excuse me even things that we don't want to experience and manifesting in such a way gives us the um options or opportunities and i'll tell you what true opportunities to choose from and many of them many doors to choose from so that you can find your unique pathway, so that you can actually step onto your unique pathway, which is your pathway to enlightenment and your purpose. 
That in itself is a miracle. This is why I say miracles are happening every day. And some of the things that we consider to be not so good in our lives are miracles in disguise. They're miracles in disguise because our life is unfolding and happening for us. And that in itself is a miracle. It truly is a miracle. Some of the things that happen are are really heinous or heinous, depending on where you are in the world, how, how you pronounce it. But some of them are. Some of them are bring you to your knees and lay you flat out. But they're miracles. They're happening for you and not to you. As you've heard me say, and if you haven't heard me say this, your life is happening for you. When you think life is happening to you, you're a victim of your circumstance. When you claim and know that your life is happening for you, you are victorious and you're in control. You are victorious. That being said, since birth, most of us, most of us have had been given a definition of what success must be and what that looks like. And most of us have been told, you know, you need to be a doctor or you need to be a lawyer or you need to be this or you need to be that or you know you need to be a journeyman or or a um you know a master a master whatever electrician whatever term right we've been told and within those within that premise we've been told what success looks like to any given chosen profession and we've been told We've also been told what we must do in order to be seen as successful in life. The house, the car, the kids, the dog, the cat, the religious or spiritual organization. It's it's all been laid out. It's all it's all like this cookie cutter thing that's been laid out. And guys, I'm not saying any of that's wrong. But what I'm saying is that we have been told we have been told. And as a result of that, well, let me phrase it this way. I actually said, in order to be seen as a success, we need to be seen through the eyes of other people to see our success. So we have to see ourselves through other people's eyes to determine whether or not we are successful. And that kind of sucks. You see, um, that means that we will be living by somebody else's determination of what must, what success must be. And then, and then only they can be the true judge as to whether or not we hit the mark. That isn't successful. That isn't a way to live. And I'm not saying, you know, you know, have the job, the whatever, the kids, the house, the car and all that. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, are you doing what you want to do because you want to do it? Or are you doing what you're doing because you have been put into this mold? You know, industry, industry dictates or has dictated for a long time how we are educated, how, um, how we are educated, how we spend our money, how we think our thoughts, what thoughts we should think, what, what we should buy. I, I'm telling you guys, when, when you actually start breaking this down and while I'm not saying this is wrong, what is wrong for me is that sometimes people appear not to be able to voice their true thoughts, their true beliefs. You know, the other day I was looking at, I think it was 
I think it's called Gold Gold Coast or Gold Coast. Um, I should know that because I, I actually uh, follow them. But they do, they put on inspirational talks and I believe it was on there, so don't quote me. But I was actually looking at uh, one that came up with Warren Buffett and he was saying something that I truly believe and I heard as a child, right? That, you know, you don't really have to finish college or high school or any of that to be successful. Now, you need to be able to read and write and read and write well to a good level. You need to be able to do mathematics. And what blew me away is that um, this thought process, and I I heard this thought process. I I say I heard this thought process. My mother had, my my mum and dad had a friend. And he, and this is years ago because we lived in Tottenham. At Tottenham N17, come on you coys. Right, we lived in Tottenham and um, he, he'd he come over and my mother was complaining because um, I don't know which one of us, and I'm going to say it wasn't me, but um, somebody wasn't really applying themselves in school. And I remember, because uh, we were in the front room and I remember he, he sort of said to my mum, well, not everybody is cut out to go to college. Not everybody is cut out to be in the, you know, the doctor, the lawyer, you know, that's, that's, that's not everybody's goal. And he said to be a success, to be successful, you don't need to do all of this. But mama wasn't really having it. Mama wasn't really, mama wasn't, but my mother was not buying into that. That wasn't happening for her. So when I heard Mr. Buffett saying this, um, same sort of thing, I was like, you go, you rock, you go. You see, I do know also from, from personal experience or interaction with people from personal experience and, and that's professional and, um, not professional, you know, like in my life that there are people who have gone on to do some amazing things in addition to doing amazing things, the things that they want to do and do it creatively and make a grip of money doing it. In addition to, if I did not say it, I was, this is what I was alluding to. They are doing things that they want to do and they are ecstatic. And the thing is, they go on to do more and more and the things that they are doing and the things that they have done are helping people, helping people at a community level, helping people, you know, with the advent of the internet, helping people at a global level, level, you know, with the, with the click of a mouse. So guys, where I'm going with all of this, let me, let me just, let me just tie this in. Because me saying this to you today is miraculous in itself. Me being able to do what I'm doing now is miraculous in itself. It's a miracle. Understand, guys, that you are never too old or never too young, as it were, to actually do what it is that you want to do. Once again, most of us have have chosen to fit this preconceived mold, mold, mold. And that's right, mold. That's what it is. This preconceived mold. And we've fallen victim to having our lives defined by the nature of our birth, whether this is race, ethnicity, whether it's location, gender, era, um, you name it, whatever. It's preconceived. And we've we've been pushed into this mold. And sadly, most conform to this dictate. And as, as a result of this, most people go through life. And I really mean this talking about if I woulda, shoulda, if I coulda. I believe people would be far less ill. There'd be far less illnesses in the world if people were doing what they were doing. I'm not saying it wouldn't be there. Because again, illness, if you didn't come here with it, if you weren't born with it, That means that you contracted an illness, whether this is airborne pathogen and or not, 
you contracted an illness because your immune system had become suppressed and it's suppressed because you aren't doing what it is that you want to do. And somebody said to me the other day, it can't be as simple as that. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And I know it's as simple as that from personal experience, from becoming ill and having a near death experience. I'm talking from personal experience. It is as simple as that. You need to do what it is that you want to do in life. Yes, there are going to be times when you're going to do things that you don't want to do, but those are miracles in themselves because they will continue to show things to you. They will continue to bring things for you so you can continue on your pathway. Nothing is wasted. There is no failure. There is only success in life because life is about moving you forward. And even if you don't move forward, life will drag you forward because you've chosen to be here. That is the miracle of life. So guys, I'm going to wrap it up by saying this. Miracles happen every day. Miracles happen every day. Some of them are like, oh my God, wow. Like, you know, getting ready to cross the road and literally feeling yourself being yanked back. Or as I've said on previous shows, you know, um, at, at the railway crossing, talking to my girlfriend sitting in the car and I take my foot. Evidently, I'd moved my foot off the brake. The train's coming and my car is rolling onto the the bloody train tracks and literally feeling like a hand push my knee down, which created the pressure for my, my leg to move, which created my foot to press on the pedal and had me realizing, oh my God, I was rolling into the train. You know, miracles, miracles happen every day. And some of them are like, wow, the majority of them are so, mm, so intimate so intimate that we don't actually realize. When you know what you are wanting, and that's the biggest thing, making that choice to actually just determine that and then making the choice to to um, follow that pathway without reservation, even if it appears unclear, miracles will happen in your life. The universal creator, which you are, will move heaven, heavens, will move everything in the heavens, everything in the earth and around it so you can have your heart's desire. And let me just say this, guys, just just so we're on the same page. If you are made from God, if you are made from God, the same essence that God is made from and God has made you from know that ye are gods know this guys it's time to step into your power people have been been hoodwinked there you go people have been hoodwinked they've been sold a bill of goods that's that's a lie and they've been sold this bull, bill of goods so that they can be controlled so guys Know what it is that you are wanting. Experience the miracle of that. Step into the miracle of who you are. Not who you've been told you should be. Step into the miracle of your life because your life is miraculous. So guys, I just wanted to share that with you today. I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you you have some serious stuff to take away and chew upon on that. Um, That being said, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. You can find me at the laws of attraction in action.com. And of course, on Facebook and um, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube, you can find me there. And of course, my website, once again, the laws of attraction in action. So you've been listening to an episode of You and the Laws of Attraction. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn, guys. Until next time, peace.